everybody, be right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Ready or Not because they just released a brand new newsletter called PVE Gameplay, which comes along with a video which we will be looking over. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and talk about the newsletter brought to you by the very generous Guinevere, who is the community manager at Void Interactive. This starts off with saying, hey everybody, it's time for another edition of our Bioweek newsletter. This week we'll be showcasing more PVE gameplay accompanied with the elements of Ready or Not's original soundtrack. Sounds interesting. They continue on to talk about PVE gameplay play it starts off with saying from the first step inside you know things have gone horribly wrong the dispatch call didn't do it justice corpses cover the floor trails of blood from crawling wounded survivors gunshots still echoing from deeper within smoke in the air alarms blaring fire spreading screams of terror civilians running from carnage suspects on every floor on edge with itchy trigger fingers it's up to you to put a stop to it now they're really trying to set the tone here so i'm next we got a clip here that's relatively long i'm gonna show it off first and then we'll talk about it afterwards but before we get into the video let's see what this text describes here a series of engagements with suspects in a hotel set to ready or not's original soundtrack all right let's hop into it So let's go ahead and break this down. The video opens up with two SWAT officers walking towards the Waverly Hotel. Our main SWAT officer here is holding an FAL DSA, I believe it's called, and Guinevere on the right side is holding an M870 shotgun, at least according to some of my subscribers. For those of you that don't know, this game is set in LA, and looking around, it seems like there's like some sort of construction going on in the background, and a building being built right next to the Waverly Hotel. The streets and the sidewalks look dirty and unfinished. The only unrealistic thing about this is that there's not a whole lot of traffic, which LA traffic is pretty god awful. So I mean, it's like the only unrealistic thing that I could see with this. Well, I guess there could be more homeless people. If you look close enough, you could actually see that there's a lot of like untextured stuff here, like untextured cones, untextured uh, roadblock things that I'm not really sure what they're called. But yeah, obviously this game still has a long way to go. Like even when beta hits, I'm pretty sure there's going to be a bunch to fix whenever that decides to roll around, obviously. But anyways, at some point he turns around and you can see like big skyscrapers. I'm not entirely sure where this is, but I know that they actually went from New Zealand to LA to photo a bunch of this stuff here. They also had a panel on DreamHack in Anaheim that I went to. But anyways, as he's looking back towards the Waverly Hotel, you can hear some sirens in the background as the scene kind of like blacks out and then goes to another scene. The scene opens up with a bang as Guinevere uses a breaching shotgun to blow open the door. We're obviously still in front of the hotel here and this time we're about to actually move in. But before we look at that, I think I saw something off to the right there. It says packet loss. Am I reading that right? Yeah, packet loss. What the hell does that mean? I'm assuming that it indicates bad connection. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe that's just like a dev sort of thing. Like they lost a the file or something. Did Ryro lose the code again? 
again. God damn it. Well, anyways, so Guinevere opens up the door and these two decide to push in together. Guinevere goes in first and this character follows up behind her. They walk into what looks like a lounge or lobby area. See a bunch of dead bodies on the floor in the front right there. I can't really tell if they're all dead or not. It looks like one of them's still alive. I can't really say for sure. See a bunch of like gift cards and furniture laid about. This definitely looks a lot less brighter than what I remembered. If you like compare this to the previous trailer. In the previous trailer it was a hell of a lot brighter. Which makes me wonder if you can actually change like the color of the freaking maps. Like from like daytime to nighttime I wonder. Maybe could you even turn off the lights? I think they said that you could. I don't remember. But anyways Guinevere is moving out to the right side. While our character is moving out to the left. And that's where it kind of ends right there. The next scene is showing two different sets of SWAT officers this time around. It seems like the first person that we're looking at here is holding a Benelli shotgun of some kind. My subscribers think that it's either a Nova or a Super 90, but they can't really say for sure. While the other person on the right is holding an M4 carbine. Definitely a stark difference from the people that we saw in the beginning here. So either this is a different team or it's just another session, I can't tell. But they're basically like walking into some sort of hallway here, but before they move on they look down to see a body on the ground here that's actually twitching. I'm assuming that this person is probably still alive, but I can't really say for sure. Because there's a bunch of blood splattered everywhere and you can't exactly hear the body itself it's just twitching it could be one of those bodies that are just dead but you know twitching after death which is possible it could just be the reflexes on the body that are just acting up even though the person is dead but that's all i really get to say about this scene let's push on to the next thing here so the next scene shows a very dark room like the most that i can really see is like the little flashlight that's showing in the middle right there but we could definitely see that the person that we're looking at is holding a less than lethal shotgun and then there's a bit of an explosion right here which kind of confuses me like i'm not really sure what that is like it looks like the door is already open somewhat and the guy that's in front of us just kind of like i think he kicks it in i mean to me it looked like an explosion but i think he just kicks it in and this is where you can kind of see that his weapon is actually a ump and then they both start to push into this area right here the guy with the shotgun obviously looks a little more to his left and he sees that there's uh i'm assuming that's an exit at the top there but see our person is looking at this exit by moving his head and not his weapon so he's free looking and then he looks back towards the other swat officer with the ump it seems like they are both pushing into what looks like a garage area and they see a suspect right there our character uses their less than lethal shotgun to try and get the guy to surrender and then it cuts to the next scene here. This time around, we're actually inside of the hotel, back with the same shotgun that we saw before. We're going into the gift shop, which kind of still looks untextured in a couple of places here. I believe this is the team with the M4 and the shotgun, the Benelli shotgun. But yeah, so our character proceeds to shoot the guy with the Benelli shotgun in the legs, dead. But he's going to need some medical help, obviously. And then they start to push down to what looks like a little basement before it cuts to the next scene. The guy reloads his weapon. Yeah, that looks pretty good. As he gets down the stairs, it kind of cuts to black there so moving on it shows them in like some sort of basement area this is the less than lethal crew with the ump i believe the person with the ump is obviously arresting someone in the back there and the arrest actually looks kind of good from the backside here i can actually imagine a cop like leaning into a freaking a pile of junk to try to freaking arrest somebody like that pretty neat the guy with the less than lethal shotgun tries to push up towards the stairs and he sees someone and he shoots him and ouch that's gotta hurt the guy's probably not dead but man taking a beam back to the nuts has gotta hurt hope he was wearing a cup then it cuts to the next scene here which i I believe is just with the same people just the dude that's a little more up on the stairs here and you can see the untextured cones here which is interesting yeah see that guy's still alive he pulls out his m9 and he aims into the next room which is where the hotel is under construction obviously then it cuts to the next scene and you see like this green wall area very ugly if you ask me and there's a guy here with a rain coat on I wonder if he works here or if he's a suspect can't really tell he's the guy with the benelli again and they're showing the arrest from the front and that doesn't look too bad i gotta say cuts to the next scene and they kick open the door the guy on the left is holding a magnum and that's the most unique thing that i can really see about this room so far they're pushing in from one room to the other and then they push it to what looks like a meat locker and there's a meat man right there hopefully he doesn't come at us with a cleaver that'd be weird cuts to the next scene but i believe it's still the same area he pushes up to the next room that's open over here sees a guy right there bam vanilla to the face as it cuts to the next scene seems like a lot of the bad guys here in this hotel are using a lot of shotguns which i guess makes sense because shotguns are more available than any other gun right well then again this is america so get pretty much fucking anything all right so it cuts to the next scene here it shows more of the lobby area it seems we're actually cutting back to the same people that we saw at the very beginning with the fal it's been a bit since we've seen these guys looking at some sort of painting which i'm assuming is probably a developer they're moving into like an interesting part of the hotel here where they see a vehicle that's probably pushed through some doors at some point or a window everything is just on fire like i have to wonder what the hell even happened here like was there like some sort of car chase or a shootout and it just ended up at a hotel like what the hell like we saw the front of the hotel so how the hell did this car 
even get in here. Like, it had to have come from the garage area or something, right? No, the truth is, is that somebody disassembled the car, reassembled it inside of the hotel, and then lit it on fire and it fucking exploded. I don't know. It actually looks like a van from this angle, but it's on fire. Then it cuts to a gunfight, which looks like it's going on in the dorms area. Dorms area. I've been playing a lot of Tarkov lately. Or part where there's a bunch of rooms. A lot of reloading with the FAL, which is pretty neat. They're fighting against, uh, I believe this is the white supremacy guy. Yeah, like I said before, there's gonna be cartel guys, like, down in the lobby area, and white supremacy guys at the very top. I'm not entirely sure what the story is here, but I believe this is like a turf war, if I'm not mistaken. And the SWAT officers obviously have to go in there and stop everything from going on, you know, from happening. And they cuts to black as you kill the uh, white supremacist guy. And it just shows them like walking through this little hallway. I believe the guy on the right has a MP5 and this person in front of us is holding a less than lethal shotgun. This is a very long hallway. Definitely not a hallway I would like to get stuck in if a firefight starts. He actually got stuck on a little bar right there, lol. And as they get to the end, they hear some sort of... I'm not really sure if it's like a gunshot or if it's somebody like pulling the pin on a grenade and they kind of like turn backwards like is that What is that? Like, you hear like a little ting? Like, I'm not sure if that's just like an audio cue or if that's actually like somebody pulling a pin on a grenade. Does that mean that bad guys can actually have grenades? That'd be weird. But then again, they both look backwards, right? Like, they heard that? Or was it just this guy? I'm not entirely sure. But that's pretty much the end of the little clip that we have here. A lot of interesting things to look at, but I kind of wish that they showed off more of the AI, you know? Just to see how good it is. I mean, they've showed off a lot more under the NDA, but it would really be nice to see what it looks like in video form that I could show it to the public, you know? But, um, yeah. Aside from that, this video also showed off some more of the soundtrack, and I would say that the soundtrack that I've heard before actually sounds better than what we heard here. This one's okay, in my opinion, but it's just like, I think the previous soundtracks just sounded a little more better than what I remembered. In fact, I'm actually playing some of the older soundtracks in the background right now. But you tell me if you like the newer one or if you like the older one, because that's all I really got to say when it comes to the video here. Let's get back to the newsletter. It continues on to say, each encounter above in the video requires the two officers to respond differently. Oh, well, it seems like it's gonna describe the video. Entering the gift shop leaves the team exposed to multiple lines of fire as windows are shot out and suspects close in from adjacent rooms. In this case, speed of action is vital to take control of the situation before you're surrounded. By contrast, the parking garage involves long distance, poor visibility, and innumerable places for suspects to seek cover. Okay, I see. So they were basically trying to show us the different situations that you could get into in different parts of the hotel. Like I said before, hotel is a pretty big freaking map. It's not tiny at all. But anyways, preparation and precision will be key here. As any move forward runs, the risk of suspects flanking behind you unseen from the darkness while car alarms trigger from shots fired oh so you can trigger car alarms that'd be cool imagine you're getting in a firefight and the car alarms are just going on and off that would be epic the upper levels combine these two elements with long hallway and bullet ridden rooms containing potential suspects it continues on to say the dichotomy of cramped close quarters combat and longer range there's a typo here it says rage instead of range engagements is something that you could see throughout the hotel this will require that you equip yourself and squad mates accordingly to handle every engagement for every successful breach and clear that you see in the video above, there are dozens of attempts by over eager players that didn't prepare. Uh, that would probably be me. I'm the type of dude that would like to like go off on my own and do stuff. It's very hard for someone like me to be a team player, I'll be honest. But anyways, didn't coordinate and didn't execute properly. Failing to account for the mission briefing, your location, and the situation at hand means that lives can be lost. Yours as well as those that you have sworn to protect. Very true, very true. In conclusion, that brings us to the end of the edition 16 of our bi-weekly newsletter covering more alpha pve gameplay and some better not soundtrack and that pretty much does it for the newsletter so what are your guys' thoughts as we get one step closer to the beta being dropped they're definitely starting to you know give us more pve than pvp if you guys notice that but let me know what you think down below because i'm gonna end it here if you enjoyed the fact that i cover games like ready or not then be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps if you're someone that's new to the channel be sure to subscribe and ding the bell you never know you might find something that you like on the channel it a lot of tactical games. I hit 10,000 subscribers. I'm gonna have a special 10,000 subscriber video coming out pretty soon here. I'm just putting a lot of finishing touches on it and all that stuff. So look out for that. With that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.